Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to add a user into your Rover account. I'm James Angerette, one of the regional traders with Emergency Reporting, and today I'll be walking you through step by step on how to add a user. Once you've signed into your account and you're on your portal's home screen, hover over Rover Settings and select Personnel Apparatus Manager. From there, you will notice in the lower left hand corner there's a blue Add User button. Once you select it, you will need to begin entering the information for the individual that you are adding. You will begin by entering the user's name. Select the user's first name, last name, and then select their display name. Their display name is what will be shown above their icon when they're visible on the map once they go en route to a location. Add the user's email address and then choose whether or not to notify them that you have added them to the rover portal. From here, you can either choose to have a random password selected for them by the system, or if in the case that you are helping them sign in for the first time, you can also unclick that and you can set a password that you will be using to help them sign in for the very first time. Confirm the password that you're going to be using, and then select Create User. Once you select Create User, you will notice the information you have entered has come across as well as these gray buttons across the top have populated. From here you're going to begin entering in the information to complete the process of adding a user. Under the user profile tab, again like I would mentioned earlier, some of the information will pull over from when you create the user, some of the additional information that you will need. If you choose to enter a home and work phone number you can do so here. It is important that you add a mobile phone number and when you add the mobile phone number you're going to enter the phone number all 10 digits no spaces no dashes no ones then you will select the mobile carrier you can choose to select an individual's carrier if it's known to you some cases there are two different versions in this case you look at AT&T and AT&T MMS CHOP the reason for both of these is if the user is receiving messages coming in like a lengthy text message would come to you where it's coming in as one or two or three parts if you select the AT&T MMS CHOP it will increase the character limit and allow that message to come through as one. Another way of entering in a carrier is to come down and select EMAG. EMAG is a universal carrier. All major carriers are covered under EMAG. All of your Verizon's, AT&T's, Sprint, T-Mobile, any major character if you select EMAG should work for that. You will enter in the user's email address and now when it comes time to select a PIN, if the user has an established PIN from another portal that they're associated with and yet that PIN is known to you, you can enter that PIN in here now. If they do not have a PIN and this is the first time they're signing in, when you hit update it will generate a PIN for them. Hitting the send button will send that PIN to them. They will need this information when they're entering the, into their app for the first time. They will enter in their phone number, and then they will enter in their PIN, and they will do a fetch and save, and it will link the two, the app and the portal. The next tab that we're going to look at is presets. When selecting presets, you have a couple options here. One, you can select presets from a user, you can select presets to a user, or you can copy presets to a group. In this case, we are going to be copying from one of the existing users in the account. In the account. To do so, you can come in, select the user that you want to, the presets to carry over from, and then you can hit copy. If you choose to manually enter presets, you can do, do so by selecting here. But like I said, in this case, we're going to copy them from an existing user. Once I hit copy, this pops up, you'll need to hit yes, and then it will select all the users, or all the presets that that user already had, it will select to bring them in for this user. As with any one of these tabs, as you're going across and you're entering information, make sure that at the bottom, when you see the update button, you click the update to save the information from the screen that you're working off of. Next, we're going to be looking at the qualifications that you're going to assign to this individual. When you click on the qualifications tab, your admins will have set up in your account the different qualifications that are applicable for your organization. Whatever qualifications apply for the individual that you're adding, you 
can come through. If you select one or you select more than one, any combination that is applicable for this user, select them. Come in and update qualifications. Now what that will give you is when the user goes in route and you see their name in route and their ETA on your display, it will also list the qualifications. This will let anybody know that all incoming responders, it will ensure things like you having a driver, you having an officer for a vehicle, knowing that you can make up a full crew. Having the qualifications listed beside their name and seeing all those lets you know that information. Once you have selected these, you're going to update the qualifications and then we're going to move along to roles. Now in the roles section, every user that you add should be listed as a subscriber. Only apparatus should be listed as apparatus. Apparatus can also be listed as a subscriber, but no personnel should ever be listed as apparatus. For the other items, you're either selecting what they can do, or you're selecting the roles or groups that they're going to belong to. Once you have made your choices, you hit update roles, and then you will move on to the notifications. In the notification section, this is where you will select whether the user receives text message alerts, email alerts, and the app alert is automatically set for each one of these items. The four areas you can get alerts for, the alarm or your incidents coming in, the message board or the generalized messages that comes across through the portal, the personal messages or the individual message sent from one person to the other, and the threshold alert covers any time you have an apparatus go in or out of service. Select whatever it is that the user wants to receive and then hit update. One suggestion that I would make to most users, because the app alerts work off of the, the device's media volume, in the case that a user may have been using their device for something else and they have the media volume turned down, it's always a good idea at a minimum to select to receive a text message as well as the app alert. That way, in the event that their media volume is turned down, they will still get the text message notifying them that they have an incident, and then they can open up their app and do what they need to do from there. The next area that we're going to look at is the password. Now, if you have set a generic password to get this individual signed in, or if you had the system randomly gener generate a password for them, this is where they can come in and set the password that they will use. In this case, we will enter in the password that we gave them, and then they will transition over to their password that they want to use when signing in. Once you've completed these steps, hit Update Password, and then move over to State. When you're selecting the state, the state is the default state that this individual is going to be in. In most cases, you're selecting In Service. That means that the individual will stay in an in-service status unless otherwise. If you get a call, if they select a route, they will switch to a route. If they take themselves out of service, by selecting out of service, they will go out of service. All other times, they will remain in an in-service status. Once you are done, you want to set that confirmation state. And then move over to mobile devices. Once the individual has went into the app, entered in their phone number and their PIN that you generated over here in their user profile, once they have entered that information and done a fetch and save, their device will appear here. Once their device appears here, this is where you can select the sounds that you will receive, whether it be for an alarm, a message, or a threshold alert. To do that, come in here, select Edit, and then choose from the list of the tones that you would like to hear. If you make changes here and you change your sounds here, you will have to complete a fetch and save in order to pull it into the app and have these tones selected in the app. Once you are done, hit update and it will save that information. This is the steps you will need to walk through to add a user. Look for other videos that will walk you through step by step on how to complete different tasks in your Rover account. Thank you very much for being a Rover customer and thank you very much for being an emergency reporting customer. Have a good day.